they were coming from all over the South because Houston was kind of a hub. So there'd be guys from Mississippi and Louisiana and they would show up and they'd need their photo shoot because they're doing their promo stuff. They got a CD coming and they're going to do posters. And, you know, these guys were rough. You know, these were guys from like the sticks. And so Clyde was coming up with ideas and we'd go out and do like these guerrilla photo shoots. We'd find locations and some of it like was cheesy concepts and all this kind of like early Southern hip hop stuff. But it was a blast. So we were looking for like locations. We'd sometimes go out on boats. You know, guys would get cars. I mean, it was like, you know, you were trying, they were trying to project an image. So sometimes we're kind of cobbling this stuff together, but we had no budget. And I was a hustling, I was a hustler. I wasn't hustling drugs like some people around, but I was hustling photographs. And so these guys would come and I'd try to make the best of it. And it was fun and challenging, but it was stressful too. So there were guys that financed, there'd be these kids that were artists. They didn't really have money and there would be a guy that would be financing it and there the idea is to try and find a group make some recordings sell it maybe play some club shows and make some money you know and these kids didn't really you know a lot of them were young they didn't have other prospects it was like cool to become a rapper you know um but yeah you had to have your cd there was still print material people were making posters because they there these you know kind of neighborhood record stores that carried all this like underground and local rap you know you go in there and there's posters everywhere you know like the latest guy so it's kind of a menagerie of that or they'd have street parties and selling cds out of the trunk and giving away posters to cute girls and so it was all you know concrete tactile promotional materials that had to be printed Clyde had a great imagination we just hit it off and then he started doing he was connected to kind of the rap and black music scene in Houston and he started kind of picking up these gigs on the side as he was building a design you know firm doing layouts and posters for parties and then rappers and kind of the local scene and he started coming to me and saying hey can you shoot some pictures I need some pictures this experience for me as a photographer was also like a cultural experience because Houston was a huge southern town that was segregated and there was an enormous swath of the town that's black and poor and a lot of the work and the rap music all came out of that. I came to Houston to go to Rice University which is a predominantly white private elite school um, and so those worlds didn't really like cross over and then there's Houston which is everything in between but, you know, I would go into these neighborhoods where it's like, there's not a white person within miles of this place. And, you know, you asked about being a black photographer. I was black enough to pass. And it was definitely like you had to blend or you had to be comfortable. And that was actually a learning experience for me, to be completely honest. Like being in 100% black environments was not what I had done in school. So sometimes the most fun shoots were like where you got to go more than like the shooting itself. If that makes sense, it's like, but taking the pictures is part of it, but it's like when you go into like a subculture or you're like immersed in a situation, that part was super invigorating to me. I just think there's a story to tell there too about like they may never have become household names around the US or even the world, but like there was still this interesting kind of arc and what the music was about and it, it being a, a, an expression of a time and a place. You know, it's kind of like folk music in a way from that standpoint. And so I got, you know, I shot Willie D over 10 years. Like he would, you know, do stuff with the Ghetto Boys. He'd come back and have his own business interests or he was a boxer for, and like I photographed him as a boxer later after he'd kind of stopped doing music. And so there were some kind of established repeat customers. And that's when I figured out I like to take pictures of people because I really like to hear them tell their stories. I just like to listen to people talk about their stuff. And I just happened to be there taking pictures. But the level I was working at, that was local fashion. I don't think that that was driven by like, I don't even remember who was on TV. I'm not saying that there wasn't some connection there, but like, that's what is interesting is, you know, that's when Southern rap was coming up and making a presence known. Like all of the hip hop that everybody knew about was New York, some LA, and then like the South bubbled up in that time period. And now is kind of become in some respects, the predominant, you know, force in hip hop music. So some of it was like, they were bringing their own style to the game, you know? 
Um, so some of the looks, they were local. Like I remember guys had starch jeans in the like late eighties. Like they'd go take their jeans to the dry cleaners and get them like super heavy starch. So they'd be wearing these like baggy Levi's, but they're like super crispy and like white tees. They're perfectly clean and like simple gold jewelry. And there was just like a look and they didn't look like they were from New York. You know, I was shooting a lot of men. And so like in the hood, these guys would have like their hooked up haircuts. Like I have this great photograph of um, C-Note from the Botany Boys and he's got this cl perfectly cut clover because they were called Clover Lamb was their neighborhood cut and I have a shot and it's like he's lined up man perfect and he went to the barber shop and there's this perfect clover on his head and he was clean and had his gear like you know they liked to look they had a look whether it was chains and watches and like athletic gear though like they kind of self-styled the guys that were somewhat successful so they came hooked up so there wasn't a whole lot of you know need to to dress them up you know some of the country guys that would come in and were like we got to get you some clothes man those ratty t-shirts aren't gonna work you know over the years i pulled out the more prominent artists and you know sold pictures or redistributed them or used them on a website but there's like reams of pictures of guys i shot one time that nobody ever heard from again but you know, there were some repeat customers. Sometimes like a guy had a label, the guy that was funding these things, he might have two or three artists over time and he would come back with a different set of guys and we'd do another round. That's that's where the music came from. And you know, for the next eight, nine years, I continued to shoot and kind of expand beyond local stuff and do, you know, regional and then a little bit of travel, but it was all kind of um, a niche in the Houston scene is where it started. Um, it wasn't all that I did. I did other photography, but um, yeah, Clyde kind of was an entree into that world for me. And uh